pray, Lord, that everything that you do, we give thanks. We give thanks no matter what situation we're in, no matter what place we're in, we're going to give you thanks, God. And I just pray, Lord, that you begin to bring people to the service, let everybody come here, let them be able to really experience the Lord and just feel his presence today. And Lord, we just thank you for all that you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen.
ahead. The next song is in your books. In the books. 97, page 97, 97.
He's given us the strength and health. Uh, 70 years, for, for most 70 years at least, of good health, you know, good strength from life, most people. And 80 years, if you're really good, you can, 80 years old, you're still working away. It's really a blessing. 90 years old, wow, it's just a miracle, almost a real blessing that you can be working. But, but our time is so short here on earth. We think about it. You know, our years of activity, our years of health, our years of where we can do things and go where we want to go is, is very limited. And so um, I, I'm all the more encouraged to realize that we have an eternity waiting for us, but we need to work for the Lord here. And I'd like to get you thinking about working for the Lord here. Hallelujah. While you are able to. Amen. Jesus said, work for while it is daytime, because the night will come in which we will not be able to work, right? Everybody. So we, while we have the daylight hours uh, available for us to see and to work and to move, and we have the vigor and the energy to work during the day, let us work during the day. And that's kind of a mirror of life itself. That, that our daytime are the years that God has given us of health and strength. And then the night will come and we'll be with Jesus Christ in, in heaven for in eternity. And so I'd like to share with you about disciple making. Because I, I believe that this is the heart of, of our work. The, the main task that we have here while we are, are vigorous on earth is to is to make disciples of the Lord. Amen, amen. And so let's look at the scripture in Matthew 28, uh, verses 18 through 20, of the very last chapter of, of Matthew, um, where Jesus is going to be ascending to heaven. And before that, he gives he gives his the most important thing, you know, the most important thing that a person says are the, his last words before he departs uh, from his, his loved ones. And so these are the last words of Jesus to, to, to us. And he says here, looking at Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20, Jesus said to them, all authority, all authority, can we all say that? All, all authority, authority, all authority. In heaven and on earth. In heaven and on earth. Has been given to me. Has been given to me. Therefore. Therefore. Go. Go and make disciples, and make make disciples, disciples of all nations, of all nations, baptizing them, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and, of the Holy Spirit, and, of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you, and teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always. And surely I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. Even to the very end of the age. And so when he says that all authority, Jesus would never, never command something to us that he would not enable us to do. And when he says go and make disciples, which is the, the imperative here, make disciples, then Jesus for sure, right, would give us ability. He, he wouldn't say go ahead and, and make a stone. Uh, he wouldn't command us to make a stone if we couldn't make a stone, right? <laughs> he, would, he wouldn't ask uh, maybe uh, me to make a, a nice wedding cake if I couldn't make it, right? No, he would ask me to make a small cake that I could make. Amen. So whatever Jesus commands, what he has commanded here, is abil- we have ability to do that. Yeah. We are able to do that, this commandment. Amen. You, I am able to make a disciple. You are able to make disciples. He commanded it, and he says that all authority, all ability and gifting and knowledge is given to you along with the command. Hallelujah. So that you can do the command. Yeah. And therefore, all of us here, not just the pastors, but, but all of us here can, can do the work of disciple making. Can you say that word, disciple making? Disciple making. Disciple making. You know, disciple making, when we say, think of disciples, sometimes we get really intimidated. We say, oh, a disciple of Jesus, that's a person just like Jesus. That's, that's so high. I'm going to make people like Jesus. Wow. That, that could be very high and very intimidating for, of a command for us to do if we were to make people into disciples. But we think of disciple making like, that's a good way to term it, disciple making like child making, child rearing, child rearing. And we know that child rearing is, is not, not, not the adult, but it's moving a little one toward adulthood and maturity. And so, so we're, we're not really, don't be intimidated by the word disciple. Don't be intimidated by that. 
but, but instead see it as a direction, a direction that we are moving ourselves and that we are moving people to become like Jesus. That when we are, wherever they are, maybe, maybe they're, they're, they have a ways to go to become like Jesus, but we are, we are somewhere helping them wherever they are. We are helping them to move to become like Jesus. They may be way over here, they may be far away, but we can place some influence upon them to encourage them, to draw them, to, to be able to bring them toward Christ. And so disciple making is really a good way to term it. Disciple making is like child rearing in that we are talking more about the process and the effort that we give leading to maturity leading toward maturity, toward the end product of, of becoming like Christ, or, or for child rearing to becoming like a mature adult. And so I would like to think of disciple making as any influence. Can we say that? Disciple making. Disciple making. Any influence. Any influence. That we can have. That we can upon have. Upon another person. Upon another person. To get him or to get her Closer to get him, to get him or to get her closer, closer to, believing, to believing and following and following and becoming like and becoming like who Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Jesus. And so our prayer is, Lord, make my life. I dedicate my life today, that all that I do, all that I think, and all that I endeavor, and all that I believe in and pray for will, will move people around me. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I'll move you to Jesus. Thank you, I'll move Jesus. you to Jesus. I'll move you to Jesus. Amen. Whatever way I can, I'm, I'm committed to it. Amen. That's, that's what we all can do. We can make that commitment today. And we all have power. We all have influence because Jesus Christ is living within us through the Woo! Holy Spirit. Yeah. And we can do that. So we are to practically, our work is, is to not just simply take care of ourselves, but, our, but, to, but to think about the great commission that, that Christ has given us. It's a wonderful, beautiful commission to practically, can we say that? Practically. Yeah, I am to, you can say I am to. I am to. Practically. Practically. And personally. And personally. personally impart. Impart. Jesus' words. Jesus' words. To others. To others. So that they will change their lives. So that they will change their lives. Based upon the fact, well, you don't have to repeat me anymore, but this is based upon the fact that that the words of Jesus change lives. Do you believe Amen. that? Amen, yeah. The words that, that come from the very mind and the heart of God change lives. And so, and so our task is simply to get those words Amen. of Christ, to study those words of Christ. Uh, when I was in college, I had a red letter Bible, red letter Bible, and I, all the red letters <laughs> I, I would read, and I would think about that, and I would, I would cogitate on it, I would ruminate on it, I, I would get it in my mind, and I would think about that, and let it become a part of me. Woo. The words of Jesus. You yeah. Know? And then let those words just begin to flow from my there mouth. You Woo. Flow there from you my go. There you go. Flow from Amen. my life. Woo. Loving yeah. people. And just incarnate those words in my life, in my actions, in my attitudes, and, and bring those words of life through my mouth to other people. And isn't that a beautiful thing? And, and when we are bearers of, of truth, that we are free inside already. We enjoy the freedom. Where Jesus said in 8 John 8.32 that you shall know the truth. Jesus said you shall know the truth and the truth will do what? Set you free. The truth will set you free. Hallelujah. And when you are free, you are free indeed. Amen. You are truly free. In, in the deepest, most profound sense, spiritual sense, Ooh. you are free. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. There's one pastor, uh, he's a teacher, David Possens, who... In his church in England, he encountered a, a very distraught woman after the service. She was crying and she was weeping, an old, older, elderly lady. And, uh, and then she, she, he went up to her and said, Oh, oh ma uh, ma Madame, why are, you saying such, why are you crying like this? And, and she began to share with him uh, a sin that she had committed when she was young. We don't know what the sin is, some kind of sin that was, was very serious for her. And, and she was crying, and, and she said, you know, Pastor, for decades, I've, I've just been burdened with this sin. I just felt so guilty about what I did when I was young, and burdened with this sin. And, and Pastor Pawson shared with her out of Isaiah 43, 25, where it says that 
that I, God, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my sake, and not only blots them out, but, but does what? God not, not only forgives our sin, but he forgets our sin. And it says that, and he remembers your sins no more. And so, uh, the pa Pastor Pawson said to her, you know, God has, your sin, according to, he read the scripture, he said, your, your sins are not only forgiven, but they're forgotten by God. And so, and so when uh, you go to God, God says, what sin did you commit? <laughs> he would say to that lady, years ago, uh, I don't remember, what, what sin did you commit? Amen. Well, I don't need to know. And, and she was so happy, she was so free, when she heard, that God had forgotten her sin of the past. And she began to dance <laughs> in the church. Can you imagine a lady, elderly lady in her 80s? And she was dancing like this. <laughs> because she was so free Amen. that God had released her. Not only released her, but he had forgotten. He said, what sin did you commit? I don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is true forgiveness. Uh, yeah. you know? Because we, we remember things that people have done for us, but what a blessing if we could even forget Amen. what, what they right. have That's done. Right. And so she began to die to dance. And so the words of Jesus, Amen. And all, these are the words of Jesus. And Jesus was saying these words. These are the words of Christ. Christ was, a, was an incarnation of those words. The words free people. Amen. And so our, our job is simply, simply, it's really simple, is just to bring the, the words of Jesus. Because we believe that the words of Jesus are so powerful, so profound, that they will change lives. Yes. They, will, they will bring abundant life to people. Hallelujah. And so our job is so simple. Just think of yourself as, as an, a deliverer of Jesus' words to people around you. Amen. But in order to deliver the words of Jesus, you've got to have the words of Jesus. Right? Yeah. You can't deliver what you don't have. And for example, if you don't read the words of Jesus, if you don't understand and study the words of Christ, reading the Bible, then, then you won't have anything to give to people. And you won't know even to live for yourself, to live the words of Jesus for yourself, that you can show the life of what Jesus' words are Amen. in you. And, and that's, that's kind of like a two-pronged way of bringing the words of Jesus to people is by they, they see who we are. They see the words living in us, abiding in us, working in us, working out through us, changing us, and bringing the love of Christ. The words become, His words of love become us. And, and people see that, they experience it. And then what we say, they believe and they trust and they receive those words. And so our job is simple. You can think of it as disciple making is, is simple in the sense that we just give on to others the words of Jesus that was passed on to us. You know, the Father gave the words of truth to Jesus. Remember? Jesus said, oh, I do everything my Father does. When he was on earth. Everything I hear from my Father, I do. And then Jesus said, I send the Holy Spirit to you. So the, the Holy Spirit will take the words of Jesus and bear those words. And then Jesus says that the Holy Spirit will live in each one of us. Amen. So that those words come into us via the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit passes those words on to us so that, that when we're with people, verses come to mind. Truth comes to mind. Ideas, the words of Jesus come to mind and say, you know, I have something for you. Uh, that God not only forgives our sins, but he forgets them. In the right moment, the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, brings those words to us when we're with people. It says, tell her these words. Tell her these words and she'll become free. Tell her these words and he'll change. This is what he needs for his particular situation, for his particular problem, for his particular need. These words from Jesus are what he needs. And the Holy Spirit is in you. He's in you. He's in you. He's in, you. He's in each one of us because that's the promise of Christ. That when I go back to the Father, I will send the Holy Spirit. So the words of the Father go to Jesus. The words of Jesus go to the Holy Spirit. And the words of the Holy Spirit are in us. Hallelujah. And, we, and they go to the people around us. And, and then what happens?
happens is that their lives are changed and we are making disciples. They're becoming closer to Christ. Amen. We're moving them toward Christ, toward looking to Christ, toward inclining themselves, seeking Christ, coming to know Him, following Him day by day. So why they should do this. They should they should scream. することはあ、本当にイエス様の方にいかさせる。あ、あ、そうさせる。いや、え、え、え、今日させるね。え、今日させる。インフルエンスでトワジーズの方に。そうまでしくんなんでこのイエス様の御言葉があなたの中に入
little spot for you. And I say, hey, every time I, before I go to Hyderabad, for a room, here in Hyderabad, he says, no, you're not there, you're uh, Come somebody, Mark, I said to him, I'm saying, Lord Jesus, please help me. I'm not going to Japanese American or Japanese KG, no, school, school, school time. Yes. So you know, it's more you know, there. So today, I'm going to go to the house. 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 Pray for me. And, but I have, I'm, that's why I go. Sometimes I don't, I don't like going. Sometimes. 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 I'm called to reach out to them and say, the Lord, give me pure courage, give me give me desire to go tonight. I don't want to go tonight. <laughs> Amani is so, so reserved, and Nikkei Jin was very, not, very, not like a uh, Hakujin, not, not so expressive, and thinking so many things and critical, and all those things I don't like about Japanese Americans, but I, God loves them. And I'm a Japanese American, and I can reach them, perhaps. Hallelujah. So I'm thinking, you know, I have to go. But you know, this is part of the Great Commission, we have to go. Amen. And, and maybe people, even people that are right there are our workers and, and people, uh, like I have renters in my other house. I got a whole, I got a new set of renters in another house. And um, and so when I go there, I, I do a soji. Yeah? I clean up, clean up the house, clean up the yard and everything. And it gives me time to talk with them. Amen. Amen. That's right. And so then I'm thinking, you know, Lord, this, this is Deshi Kutnejo. This is a good chance for disciple making because I can I can talk with them and maybe some way Lord use me. And so when I see Bruce, he's one of the renters over there, and he's going through a lot of health issues. I said, Let me pray for you, Bruce. I pray Jesus can help you. And, and you've been going through surgeries and your legs are all swollen up, you're swollen up, you have water in your legs, edema, and you're really suffering. Oh, it's terrible. But Jesus is going to touch you and heal you. Let me pray for you. Amen. And so I pray for him. So Jesus heal. You know, I try to give a plug for Christ all the time. And I have a couple other renters, all of them. I have another guy, Stan. Stan, he had a terrible life. One little renter, he was abused when he was young. He was a child actor, you know, child actor when he was 10, 13. And his, his parents used him, took all the money that he made. He, he worked with Michael Jackson. He worked with, with all these actors, these musicians and everything. And he was a, like a child, you know, actor and dancer and everything. And, but his parents, they took all the money and then, and then when he was an adult, he said, I need money, I need money. What happened? I made so much money when I was young. And they, they said, well, we, we sent you to Disneyland. We gave you vacations. We sent you here and there. We paid you back. And then his mother even disowned him because he was pressing his mother so much for money recently. His mother disowned him and put a restraining order, restraining order, police order, don't come near me. <coughs> and so, you know, I feel so. And he said, my wife passed away four years ago and I, I tried to commit suicide. He puts his arms like this. He's got scars with razors. He cut his arms and tried to kill himself. And he said, you know, I, I, my son has disowned me. He's, he's, taken, he's taken, took all, all my stuff. I'm, I'm homeless. I'm just renting a room from you. I can barely survive. He's my age. You know, I just felt so much compassion for him. And, and uh, he, he asked me, can you help me in any way? And I, I called church on the way. And I said, I got to get back to him, but there are there's a, a relief ministry, relief ministry. They have small groups for, for people that have lost their spouses, and, and they're for people that are grieving, and for people that are in need, and they have a small group, and they have counselors, counselors, a church on the way. So I want to get them plugged into that. But you know, um, trying to reach out, when I see my renters, when I see them, I'm thinking, God is 
safe and useful Amen. for him. And so it's, it's very important. When we think about disciple making, we have to we have to go where the people are. We have to go to the people. The people might be right in front of us, you know, right right there. We're working with them. And so what it means when we go to the people to redeem Allah, it means come back to Imukte. It begins with Inori, Mazu how can God use me to, to make him more and more Jesus in person think more about Christ? How can I make this person think more about Jesus? And, and maybe maybe I won't be the one to lead him to Christ. Maybe I will be the one to lead him to Christ and pray with him. But maybe not. Maybe I'll just kind of be like a kosasenu just lead, kind of push him, draw him for yes, I'm gonna hold. Maybe some shikoto dake, kamo shikunai. Or moshi kamisan watashi wo kakare wa kejime, kejime. Uh, maybe God wants me to seal the deal, you know, since the deal and, and have received Jesus, then then maybe God will use me for that too. So be be ready and be open. But you know, uh, Daniel Brown, he, I have a quote here in the in the worship program, and I'd like for us to look at it in the worship program. See, the problem is, the, the culture in which we live instructs people to take care of themselves. With little thought of looking to the needs of others. So that we grow up spiritually backwards, um, thinking thoughts like, I got my own, you get yours. So, so you, you mean, I got my own, get, so get yours. Our culture, teach, our culture teaches us to preserve our, our life. To get everything we can for ourselves in order to assure our own comfort and well-being. So for us to be comfortable, us to have enough this, enough of that, and, and enjoy this and enjoy that, so, so our culture teaches us to live that way. And that's what people are. Oh, we all are, uh, uh, I guess we all are influenced by our culture in that direction. But you know, that's counterculture. Amen. Hallelujah. So the world champions and celebrates those who handle life without anyone's help. I don't need your help. I'm not going to help you. I don't need your help. 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 So he said, but, but the, God's kingdom is different. We have, to, we, have to depend upon, we have to depend upon the Lord. So it creates an independence. Independence that removes people from close and caring proximity to, to one another. So the kekka wa parallel koto ningen to ningen ka. Because minna bara bara ni natte, minna koritsu they become isolated and get jibun shitori, jibun no shitori, jibun no jibun no jibun no kanki. Hokana shitori kanki nakune nakte nakunau. 
So we become isolated, independent. Don't believe this. We become independent from one another. This is our society. I don't know who my neighbors are. You know, when I was in Milwaukee, Oregon, I knew all the neighbors. I had the Burleys, I had the, the Harrisons, I had the Paulsons. I knew all my neighbors because that was the community of life after the World War II. But here, when I came to California, we're all afraid of our neighbors. They're going to steal from us. They're going to they're going to take from us. They're going to damage our, ourselves. So we we I don't know my neighbors. I don't talk to my neighbors. New ones come in, they go and they leave, and they come. They're, they're coming in and going out, and so very isolated. I noticed California life compared to Oregon rural life of the past. Maybe Oregon is like like it is down here too. People are very separate and isolated. I don't know who my neighbors are. I don't know their names. I don't know the name of any neighbor. In Milwaukee, when I grew up as a kid, I knew all the names. Hakujin, yo, mina Hakujin makari deshita. Oregon was kono shushin, so da tera eta neighborhood no shushin no tokoro kurizato no tokoro wa mina Hakujin des deshita ne. So shite mina kono one street ni shite shite ru shite ita. Oh, Paulsons ko yinab namae o zenbu shite we knew sto 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 no ie. Who, who lived there. And we, we talked, we gave, we exchanged eggs. Oh, I need some eggs to tomato. I did say, oh, hey, I take my eggs. You want milk? I got some milk. We helped each other. And that's the way it was in rural life of uh, 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 Milwaukee, Oregon. But when I came to California, I was shocked because, because people are so, they're so afraid of other people. When I came down, my house was broken into after I moved to the valley. After one month, remember Tucson? After about three months, our house was broken into. Somebody opened the window up and they came. They stole my VCR. They stole my cameras and everything. Oh, I thought, oh, this is California. Wow. <laughs> In Oregon, we could leave our doors unlocked. Not worry about people. And so I, I became like everybody here in California. I put bars on my windows. You know, and, and I was suspicious of my neighbors. And, and that's the way it is. And so the, the, what happens is, what happens is that that it's hard to be able to reach out to other people. Then do she need to believe in God? Because we become so isolated. And so we have to somehow fight and, and deal with, with that, that spirit of, of isolation from others. And so that's why it's, it's very important. We cannot make disciples. We cannot make disciples if we, if we can't see, get close to people. It's very critical that we get close to people. And, and uh, there are many ways uh, to lead people. Just think of how we can bring the words of Jesus to people. How we can bring Jesus, Jesus to people. It's not bringing myself, you know. I'm not the center. You're not the center, but Jesus is the center. Amen. Right? Amen. And, and so when, when I meet people, I don't want them to see just me, but I want them to see Jesus in me. I want them to know that Jesus in me, because the Jesus in me is far greater Hallelujah. and will help them far more than probably what it can help. Amen. Yes. 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 But yes, someone shokai kosaseru awasasetaides. I want him to bring people to Jesus. Amen. See, that's that's we gotta get that thing. So so Jesus is in me, Jesus is around me, Jesus in you. So how can we bring this Jesus to to people that we meet, Amen. Yes. so that they experience him too? I can't saseru tayo. Yes, sir. No, he didn't say. Presence. So. And so, I just kind of think of it that way. Now maybe you're thinking, well, I, don't, I, I can't lead a person to Christ, but you know, a good place where Jesus is really strong is in this church right now. もし誰か誰でもこのこのルームに入れば体験させるちょっと感性がありますいっぱいあります自分の家よりも 
この道向こうの道よりもでもこ,こっちの方が力持ちですだから that's why we want to invite people to church because we know that when they come in here they'll experience Christ Christ is in this room and so、um, I'd like to share with you out of、uh, John Yohane Den no、uh, 1章、uh, 43節から51節までちょっと読んでいただきたいです If you can read from John chapter 1, verses, uh, uh, chapter 1, verses 43 to 51,、uh, we, we read, just to kind of read with me, in Hobo Demo, Yon Demo Gi, you can read in English,、uh, chapter 1, verse 43. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, Follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. And Philip found Nathan, Nathaniel, and told him, We have found the one that Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. So, in other words, Philip's job was simply to bring Nathaniel to Jesus. Yes,、uh, Philip, 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 no, she got a lot. この彼の知ってる友達、友達ナタニオをイエス様のところに連れて行く仕事だと。仕事だと。こうさせる仕事だと。We have found Jesus come. And then ナタニオちょっと疑問があるね。あれそうです。この646節を読むと。ナズレット、何か良いことが出るんだろう Nathaniel asked. So, Nathaniel was a good person. But Philip said, Anyway, come, eat the good side. Mini, eat the good side. Go and see him. And then, Yonju Nana says to me, When Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching him,、uh, he said of him, Yes, I'm a Sugi Wakata. Nathaniel, beautiful man. He is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. It's a lot of money. Yes, I'm a Sugi Wakata. I'm a Sugi Wakata. I'm a Sugi Wakata. He was able to see the purity in. Nathaniel's heart. And that was a miracle in itself. And, and I think Nathaniel, when he heard that,、uh, he, was, he was very, he said, Wow, who is this man who, who could, he, he could see, see inside of me? Who knows who I am? So it really, really amazed him. And Jesus answered and said, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree. Before Philip called you, called you. And then, Yonju Kusetsu, Yoku Yok, meet the good sign. In verse 49, Nathaniel declared, Rabbi, you are truly the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. I believe that you are the King of Israel. Just by looking at Yes, some of the people who are the k ネタニオは信仰が入って,入って,て彼の自信。見ること、イエス様を見ることだけ、イエス様に会うことだけで、体験で信仰になって、ネタニオの中に信仰になって。素晴らしいね。ピリプは偉い仕事をやったね。このネタニオをイエス様のところに連れて連れて行った、くれた。くれたね、言ってくれた仕事はす,すごい仕事ですねそ。そういうふうに同じのように私たちの仕事も同じかもしれないね。時があるね。So for us too, Philip's work was great. He just simply, he just simply brought Nathaniel to Jesus. And Jesus did the rest. Because Jesus is Jesus. And when you see Jesus, you, your life is changed. When you truly see the Jesus, Bible, your life is changed. You truly encounter Jesus, your life will be changed. If Jesus were to walk into this room, we would, we would, we would fall down. 
we would be shocked, taken back, you know. Remember when the army, they came to take and arrest Jesus? Remember, remember, this is kind of a funny scene. When they were in the Garden of Gethsemane, the disciples and Jesus, and, and then the soldiers finally came, and the whole Roman, like a Roman platoon came to take Jesus away, and the commander of the platoon said, are you Jesus? Are you, are you Jesus? He said, I am. And when he said, I am, everybody fell down. <laughs> Simply by the word he said, I am he. Amen. I am he. By that word, everybody went knocked down because the authority and the power of Christ was so powerful. And, uh, and so I think, you know, if we get a little taste of that, uh, Christ's presence is going to change, change us, it's going to change the people around Amen. us. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, so pray. Pray that, that God will show himself. This is, this is a good prayer. Pray that Jesus will show himself through you. Amen. Yeah. Maybe it's, it's a little bit toned down, you know, because you're not Jesus exactly, but there's still Jesus in you. Amen. And so in some way, that light's going to go out and it's going it's to affect people. Just believe it. Yes. Believe it. You have authority of Christ in you. Every one of you. You have authority of Jesus in you. And you have a Jesus in you. Amen. And so Amen. when you meet people, whoop, you're going to whoop, you're going to feel whoop, something <laughs> is going to touch them. You believe that. <laughs> and, and you're going to influence them. You too. Yeah, you yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. You have Jesus in you. Honor that. Respect. <laughs> Satan wants to say, Satan wants you to believe, no, no, you don't have Jesus. You're not good enough. Ooh, you don't know the Bible yeah, well that, enough. You're not following God. No, don't believe that. Amen. That's Satan. That's a lie. But you have to believe, no. It, it says in the word of God that if I believe in Christ and he's in me, if I confess him with my mouth, believe in my heart that he will be dead, then I am saved, right? Hallelujah. Then I am in him. So you must take that word, take that promise, and live on that promise. Amen. Stand, stand on that promise, <laughs> okay? And know that you have authority and power. So when you meet people, you say, God, I have Jesus in me, Holy Spirit's in me, and so use me. Jesus in me. Use me. I'm going to meet this person now. Use me. Yes, Lord. Yes. And let Jesus. them feel something. Let, yes, let me God. say something. I'll be led by you. Let me do something. Yes, I'll maybe not Lord. do anything. Yes. But just be there with Jesus in me. And that's that's a good step. That's the first step in me reaching them and moving them toward, yes. towards you. So we see that, that if you cannot, if you don't feel like you can actually lead somebody to Christ that right now, then, then bring them where Christ is. And, and that's the service. The service is a good place because Jesus is really here very powerfully in this place. And so bring him here. And, and that's, what, that's what I used to always, that's a good strategy, you know? A good strategy is just bring him to church. Yes. And that's why I say just come to sunrise. Woo. Come to church because, because they're going to feel something here. Ah, they're yeah. they're going to experience something. Woo. They're going to make it, you know, be moved in some way. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So anyway, all of you, あなたも、もう同じの権利を持っています。ハレルヤ。そして、イエス様があなたの権利、あなたに一人一人にあなたたちに一人一人にあなたの権利を持っています。ハレルヤ。そして、イエス様があなたの権利、あなたに一人一人
because you have the same authority. And now I'll send you out. You can go out <laughs> and reach people that I can never reach. Woo! You see people I never see. That's right. You see people in Camarillo I never see, okay? <laughs> you see people maybe in, in your area where I never see, I never meet them. Only you do. Amen. People in your family in Okinawa, I, I never can meet them. But you can. It's, it's your, your privilege. The same thing in your neighborhood, your neighborhood, your working area. Only people I never, I'll I'll never be there. That's right. But but you you're gonna be there. That's right. And you can do the yes, Lord's work. God, yes, Lord. And for me there. Okay? We won't by ourselves. We work that way. Okay? We rejoice this. together in the victories that God has given us. Hallelujah. People who have come and moved toward Christ. Share those testimonies with us here. Amen. God bless you. And I'm gonna pray for the offering too. Thank you, Lord, for today. We pray that you will make us into true disciples of Jesus Christ who will make disciples and, and make people like ourselves. So I pray that you'll help our people, Lord, to be strong in you Amen. And, and take up the authority they have in you. Yes, and if you Father. bless this offering, we pray. Yes, we Jesus. receive it, Lord. We thank you for it. It comes from you. Everything is from you. And Hallelujah. We dedicate it to you. In wow. Jesus' name, amen. 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 So we had a great trip at uh, Zuma, actually not Balsa Chica Beach, it was a Balsa Chica Beach trip, but it turned out to be a Zuma Beach Amen. Uh, picnic. Woo. It's over Malibu. We decided to go there. Uh, and, and we and Lord found, you know, we found a place. We had to drive off Pacific Coast Highway and we found Amen. a Amen. place. Yes, God. I, I got my stove out, home and stove, cooked some hamburgers, and, and then Teopasan uh, made some uh, potato salad. Amen, yeah. Uh, potato salad. So anyway, and then we had we went there, um, had, a, had a good time, and uh, Pastor uh, Jim and I attended the seminar yesterday on discipleship making. Today I shared with you some of the ideas of, from that, um, that seminar, some of my own ideas and some of his ideas, so uh, I wanted to impart those to you. Uh, so we plan to go probably uh, on, on that, during that week. My, father, my brother passed away at his memorial service. It will be the 15th of September. So um, that's coming up. We try to share. I try many times to share Christ with him. I think he knows the gospel. I think he knows. I think I believe that that he knows the Lord. Uh, at least to believe in him, and, and I, I pray. I look forward to seeing him in heaven. So uh, just pray for that memorial service. He's he's got his wife, and he's got four four children and many grandchildren. So just pray that they'll all come in some way. We can influence them. calendars are out for September. You can look at them and please read the Bible every day. It's, it's very important for you to get the word in and we encourage you to read the Bible. Um, we try to follow, you know, read every day and learn. Okay, you can go ahead and read the announcements. I'm going to publish the